Well, thank you everybody for, for joining us uh, today for this press conference. Um, I'm Charles Bustani uh, on the House Ways and Means Committee where I serve as the Chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee. And joining, to, uh, joining me today is uh, Chairman of the Subcommittee on Health, Wally Herger, and uh, a very important member of the House Ways and Means Com uh, uh, Committee, Dave Reichert, who uh, actually started this process and asked some of the basic questions that led to this report. Today, the three of us will be unveiling a report, which is the culmination of an 18-month investigation that first started with three members, including uh, certainly uh, Mr. Reichert, who was uh, very instrumental in starting this process, and Congresswoman Jenny Brown Waite, who uh, did not run for re-election, but was very instrumental in getting this process started, of course, working with our chairman of the uh, Health Subcommittee. The uh, purpose of this event today is to share a report with all of you that we hope will shine a bright light on the nation's largest seniors organization uh, accountable to the dues paying seniors whom they claim to represent, the AARP. And so at this time, what I would like to do is turn, uh, turn the mic over to the chairman of the health subcommittee, Mr. Herger. Thank you, Dr. Bastani. This is our report that we're here today on. Over and over again during the healthcare debate, questions arose about why AARP was appearing to lobby in opposition to its members. We couldn't understand why AARP supported a health care reform bill that would threaten access to doctors, to hospitals, and could force seniors out of the plan they know and like and into new plans and potentially even higher premiums. We believe that AARP operates in direct opposition to the needs of their senior membership and that seniors ought to be aware of these practices. Under the new law, which AARP supported, seniors will see services cut as they faced with the prospect of losing the care they have liked. We think they ought to know what we've uncovered so we can make more educated decisions about their future health care needs. On the other hand, as seniors struggle, AARP has been engaged in spending that doesn't seem to have anything to do with seniors, such as first-class travel, lavish resorts, the sponsorship of $14 million NASCAR racing teams, these are very troubling findings. W with that, uh, my colleague from Washington, uh, Dave Reichert. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Dave Reichert. I represent the 8th District of Washington State, and uh, I'm uh, proud to be here with my good friends, uh, Dr. Bustani and, uh, and Chairman uh, Herger. Um, I'll just tell you that uh, Jenny Brown Wade had already started looking into uh, AERP uh, naturally because she has a lot of uh, seniors, retired seniors um, in her district. Uh, I started to think about the, the support that AERP gave to the S-CHIP bill. I think that was back in 2007, and my, one of my staff members remembers that I was on a treadmill when I, was, when I sent the BlackBerry of, I, I don't quite get the connection here as to why AERP is supporting a $200 billion cut uh, to support uh, children's health care. You don't take from one group that needs help and support uh, to give to another. So we eventually, of course, the Senate figured that out, and we found a different way to pay for that. Then fast forward to, um, uh, to the uh, health care uh, bill debate uh, discussion. Uh, in between that time, we really started to take a look at uh, the, the revenue that was generated through royalties um, by AARP allowing uh, United uh, Insurance Companies and others to uh, use their brand. And what we discovered is that uh, in 2009, the uh, revenue from royalties for AARP was at about 19%. And today it stands at almost 50%. Uh, and the way that that's going to increase and grow is if you look at um, the, the, the uh, 
health care bill and Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage is going to take a $200 billion, approximately a $200 billion cut. When the 14 million seniors in Medicare Advantage realize that that uh, program will continue, will start to uh, disappear, uh, those seniors, and it's estimated by CBO that uh, about seven to eight million seniors will uh, leave Medicare Advantage. When they leave Medicare Advantage, they will be seeking supplemental insurance. Some will decide, well, the only insurance I can get is in Medicare. They're going to pay higher premiums and they're going to um, get less service because there's a $300 billion cut over there, if you recall, about. The second choice they have is to go buy a personal policy, but unfortunately, after 2013, uh, that policy begins to fade away because no new enrollees can be allowed into those policies, no new benefits are allowed, and so a senior then would have to leave that program, a program they might like, an insurance company or an insurance plan, a health care plan they may like, but they won't get to keep it. So their final option really is, well, they could decide not to get any supplemental insurance, or the final option could be this, uh, which we, we, we think, and Others uh, that have looked at the, uh, the program uh, believe that there will be a large number of seniors who go to Medigap Insurance, uh, which is the insurance companies, as you know, endorsed by AERP. AERP gets a percentage of each senior that signs up for Medigap Insurance. They get a percentage of each person. Under Medicare Advantage, they get a flat rate fee uh, from United and now they're going to get a percentage of every person who signs up for Medigap insurance. This, we know, if you look at the numbers, will explode their revenue uh, directly related to royalties. My question is, is AERP an insurance company? It sure seems like they are. There is a certain amount of risk that they incur when they take a percentage of, of uh, each person who goes to Medigap. Um, but the real overarching question here that I think that seniors across this country should be asking AARP is who are you working for, really? Where is your heart? Are you with the seniors of America? Are you really protecting the seniors of America's health care? Or are you out to make money for AARP? Is this your goal? That's my question. And I think it's a question that needs to be answered. And eventually, when we go through this hearing on Friday, more information will be shared with you. The final question will be for the IRS to take a look at uh, where AERP should be. Should they be defined as an insurance company? Are they a 501c3? Lots of questions still to ask, and we're going to continue to ask those questions. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Dave. During this investigation, it became very clear that despite its privileged tax-exempt status, in many cases, AARP represents a for-profit entity and, in fact, an insurance company. The lack of strong walls between the for-profit and non-profit sides raised serious questions about its tax-exempt status. AARP's non-profit tax status is now in question, and the proper authorities, the IRS, ought to investigate whether or not they're meeting the requirements of a tax-exempt organization. Now that the information, gather, uh, in information gathering phase has been completed and concluded, members are turning the report over to the IRS to ask them to examine whether or not the tax-exempt status uh, has been abused. Uh, that concludes our presentation, and uh, we will be happy to answer any questions. We have the report here. Uh, it should be made available to all of you. You certainly can get it off the website or talk to our, our staff. Uh, we're gonna, we will widely disseminate the report. Thank you, and we'll take questions. Stephen, we'll start with you. Do you believe that AARP has violated their tax exempt status? Well, that's going to be ultimately for the IRS to determine. But we, we believe that the information that's been uh, brought forward in this report is very troubling and calls uh, into question that tax exempt status. And I think it's, it's a pretty compelling report. And as you look at it, uh, you can go through it and, and, and see what you, you know, what you think about it. But, uh, the bottom line now is we're going to turn this over to the IRS and have them make that determination. They're best suited and in position to do this. 
critics of you and, and, and allies at AARP say that this is just an attempt to intimidate the, all those who supported the health care plan, and that if you can uh, get AARP to back down, then it will, the smaller groups who have less clout will be even more intimidated. I mean, how do you respond to that? That's not the case at all, no. Right, no, no, no. This is about seniors. This is about uh, fairness. It's about uh, whether or not this entity is misrepre misrepresenting itself to seniors. This is about whether a nonprofit or an entity purported to be a nonprofit is, in fact, abusing uh, that tax exempt status. And I think seniors deserve to know. They're going to see disruptions in their health care coverage, as uh, my colleague, Mr. Reichert, had, had, has just stated, uh, as we see a shifting out of Medica uh, Medicare Advantage. Uh, they're going to be in a position uh, to have to search for uh, Medigap coverage or some other kinds of coverage. And I think seniors deserve to know where their, their dues are going if they're members of AARP, and they deserve to understand what this entity is all about. Can I yeah, yeah, Dave, yeah, go ahead, please. I, I'd like to respond to that, too. As, as uh, um, maybe some of you in the room know, uh, my previous uh, uh, job was uh, with a law enforcement agency. I was a cop for 33 years. I started out in a patrol car, uh, and I was a homicide investigator uh, for 13 years and worked on the Green River case as a lead investigator in that case. I ended up as the sheriff of King County in, in Seattle, Washington, my last eight years. So what I want to make very clear uh, to the gentleman who asked the, the last question is that I don't work uh, for political reasons on this uh, in this job. I still have this the heart of a law enforcement officer and when I see something I think smells I'm going to investigate it. This has nothing to do with with trying to politicize the health care bill. This has everything to do for me in doing the right thing for the people uh, in our seniors' uh, uh, community across this country. And as Dr. Bristani said, they have a right to know what the truth is here. And if you look at, the, at, at some of the charts uh, that will uh, appear in your handouts, uh, if you look at the revenue royalties and the royalties from revenues going up, the revenues from membership is only 17%. And when you look at the amount of giving uh, on the 501c3 side, over the last few years, it stays static, essentially, but the revenues climb at an alarming rate. So where is that money going? We want to know. Sorry, you are strong from Bloomberg here. I'm wondering if you all think that the IRS should investigate other groups who might have similar profiles as large portions of their operating uh, revenue from royalties and things like that, um, or that don't necessarily get a, a large portion of their, uh, their operating revenue. Today's event is, is basically specifically about AARP and what seem to be some abuses of its uh, tax-exempt status, and that's what we're looking at today. That's the focus of the report. Uh, I can tell you as chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, the tax code. Uh, we're going to be conduct conducting very vigorous oversight going forward because, again, in addition, in this case, I mean, obviously, we're, we're very concerned about seniors. As a heart surgeon, most of my practice was caring for seniors, and I saw situations where they were abused uh, either by uh, insurance products or other, other types of entities. It's about fairness and transparency. It's about fairness to seniors, but it's also about accountability to the U.S. taxpayer. And so this report is about AARP today. This press conference is about AARP and a hearing uh, as well on Friday will be so. Yes. How exactly are you making the argument that supporting health care reform constitutes working against the AARP membership? That's not at all what we're, uh, we're talking about. What we're saying today is this is an agency or an entity, a nonprofit entity that is purported it put itself out there as advocating for seniors, and yet it has supported significant Medicare cuts to create a new entitlement. Now, how is that in the interest of our seniors, point number one? And point number two, there are very disturbing facts in this report that suggest that this entity is acting as a for-profit insurance company. In fact, it would be ranked in the top 10 as insurance companies. Uh, it's collecting premiums. 
It's, it's, it stands to benefit to the tune of $1 billion uh, conservatively over the next 10 years while its, it's, it's actual 501c3 uh, output on behalf of seniors has remained flat. So we're just raising questions about the tax-exempt status and whether there have been abuses here. Sir. Sort of the, uh, what's, what's, what's the end game here? You know, aside from the uh, open light and, and the transparency, what conclusions do the three of you draw? And, and take it one step further, where, where might you go with those conclusions? Well, these are very serious concerns that we have, and, and, and the facts that came out in the report are troubling. We're going to turn it over to the IRS. We feel that it's the proper uh, venue for the IRS to take a look at this. Keep in mind uh, that uh, this is not the first time AARP has had similar troubles. Uh, they were found to be uh, uh, in arrears of, uh, I think it was $135 million in unrelated business investment taxes uh, in the past and had to pay those taxes. And there was also violation uh, of, of the law with regard to some of their mail outs. And I think it was in, in excess of two, it was almost $3 million where they used uh, a nonprofit uh, rate for for-profit activity. So these things are all in the report. I invite you to, to read through the report carefully and, um, and uh, you can draw your own conclusions. Where we are today is to hand over this report to the Internal Revenue Service and they will conduct, hopefully conduct an investigation. Thank you very much.